Hi guys, Mindstone here. So here is the video for Mage with the Witchwood deck review. This time I've brought you Elemental Tempo Mage. So the deck does play a lot like Secret Mage played before the standard rotation, but there are some key differences. First of all, it's not quite as fast. You don't have um, equally strong ways to cheat out value and tempo, just like Secret Mage did, but I've tried to make it feel very similar to. However, this loss in tempo, mainly tempo, has led to that the deck actually has a lot more minions, so you can actually play sort of as a mid-range deck at times. The card drawing consistency is also a little bit better than Secret Mage was before, so you have a bit more card draw in between, even though that's not much. So, overall, the changes aren't terribly big, but it still plays like this aggressive mage thing. So yeah, but without further ado, let's just talk about the list. So the first card up is Firefly. Firefly is really in here because it's a good activator and because it beats acro decks. I think I've previously in the series talked about how acro decks are obnoxious and Firefly helps us a lot against these. Especially because this deck doesn't actually have a lot of good anti aggro tools, so Firefly is quite imminent for actually helping us there. But yeah, it's just Firefly seems like a good and well, it's a good and a dispose. Good, good disposable minion, that's what I wanted to say. So you can play it sort of with any left of mana that you have, and that's just fairly efficient. It's also important to note that it actually triggers elemental synergies, which we have a few of in this deck. Yeah, then we've got Mana Worm. So this card is obviously insane. The stats are good and the effect is good, so that's all about. Well, Mana Worm is just an amazing card, and it's, it's going to be in about any mage deck, which is going to do anything aggressive for the next forever basically so yeah that's a super strong card then we've got blood mage thanos i'm playing this guy because i like the card draw right and we have a lot of burn spells so i felt like why not just put thanos in there the, it's also that those burn spells are often low cost right so thanos just kind of helps that out makes it even more scary and for that i kind of like him so it's a little bit of a wonky card and I would not be um I wouldn't be sad to replace him I would say. He's not core to the deck but he's funny enough and I feel like he's pretty solid. So yeah. If you don't have Thanos or something like that, there are super valid replacements. I think about any two drop, but probably Amani Berserker would be very lovely. But really anything that does damage. It's good. I haven't really thought a lot about techs for this deck and, well, replacements, because I feel like the synergy fits really well together, so it's kind of hard teching anything out. But Thanos doesn't do all that much for the synergy, so I would suggest that finding something is fine. It's also that the synergy fits well together, right, but the deck still has that ability to just fit about anything in there. Since it's sort of a mid range aggro shell, which is going to go good with about anything. Yeah. Then we've got Flame Geyser, which is one of our burn spells. So I like Flame Geyser because it's good for removing small things, and you can help use it to, as additional burn if you want to kill the enemy, and you get elementals out of it, so it's going to be a lot easier to trigger those elemental. It'll say they have effects that trigger off other elementals. So yeah, just a pretty solid card in general. I like that the, this deck has sort of found a use for it, because it was usually not played a lot since Frostbolt, which is the better alternative. But um, speaking of that, Frostbolt is the next card up, and here we have a card which is an all-time mage stable. So Frostbolt is obviously in there, because it's good damage for killing enemies, and the freeze effect can be super important. It's just, in general, a good card. So, yeah, about that... I don't think I have a lot more to say about Frostbolt, it's probably just something, well everybody has it right because it's a basic card, and it's just a super amazing card. Then we've got Primordial Glyph. So the Glyph is sort of good because you can get other good spells out of it, and that's just nice. Also that you can get something like a Pyroblast two turns earlier if you glyphed somewhere in the game, or you can get a flame strike out of it, or whatever. It's really adaptable to the situation. There's often a good option. Of course, there are times where there's no good options, but most likely you'll get something you can use at least somewhat. I feel like Glyph is really good, and it has synergy with sources of 
Sorcerer's Apprentice, which we will get to later. Yeah. So, and then we've got Pyros. So Pyros, he's in there for value, right? Because you get a lot of value out of playing three big elementals. Well, the first one's not big, but the other two are. And then he helps to trigger those elemental triggers. Just like Thalos, he's sort of a replaceable card, and I feel like sometimes he's a little bit too slow. I would again suggest Armani Berserker. But, yeah, just, just about anything. And we'll do instead of Pyros, I guess. Um, then we've got Sorcerer's Apprentice. So the Apprentice is really important since she sort of discounts a lot of these cheap spells you have, like Flame Guy, Frostbolt, and Primordial Glyph. That just means you can play them a lot e more easily, and turn three becomes a lot better um, if you play Apprentice and a spell. That's actually a pretty solid turn three. Yeah, and the stats are good, so I kind of like it. It's just a lovely card. It helps you squeeze out things um, if you're drawing a lot of cards, which you, w you will be when you've played the Mage Weapon, which we will get to later, Elneth. Um, but yeah, just a solid two drop, and yeah. I think I've said that there are a few decks that have good two drops, but this deck is an exception because there are some pretty good two drops available to it, including Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yeah, but next card up is Arcane Intellect. So we like card draw because we need to. Well, we it's a pretty a uh, cheap deck, right? So you're often going to run out of cards if you don't draw some, since you can often play more than one card a turn. Therefore, we kind of need the card draw, and it's just it's nice for refilling. It's got a pretty nice cost for what it does, so not much there. It's just a solid card. I'm playing Talk Reaper, so Talk Reaper is really there for beating and aggro decks, right? But he's super good at protecting your other minions as well. I feel like often times it's a little bit defensive, and I would like some more aggressive elementals, but he sort of does the job, and he's really good at just being there and triggering the elemental synergy for those um, elementals and others, other things that care about playing elemental on turn 3. So, overall just a pretty solid minion and I think he's played in so many decks at the moment just because he's good, right? And this deck is no exception because Tar Creeper is just a good card, so that's why we're fitting him in there. We've got Fireballs. So I think about anybody who's played Hearthstone don't know how good Fireball is. The card is like you use it in the tutorial, I believe, and it's just stupidly good. And I think any mage deck that could ever fit a Fireball in would do it. I think there's been a, maybe a few control mage decks that didn't do it because they didn't care about burning the enemy. But any every single aggro deck, egg, mage aggro deck, and every single um. Well, mid-range mage deck has had this card in it because it's super disgusting. So there's about nothing to say. It's just a good card. Yeah, we've got Steam Surger. So this is one of these elementals that trigger off having played an elemental during the last turn. And I think this is not a card which is popularly played, but I feel like it's still pretty good. The reason for that is it hits pretty hard. Five attack is a lot of attack, right? So it does quite something. It, it it does a lot of damage when it attacks. So that's nice. The stats are in general pretty good. Um, yeah, and then the battle cry. Getting another burn spell is lovely. In general, just getting a spell out of a decent minion on turn four just seems good to me. I would compare it very much to something like Chilwind Yeti with an upside, which is usually considered a good card. Um, well, Chilwind Yeti is not considered a good card anymore, but Chilwind Yeti with a uh, with an upside is considered a good thing. Um, so, I think that's about all there is to say to Steam Surger. It's just a solid minion, and it's sort of trying to fit all that elemental theme in the deck. Yeah. Um, and then we've got Tolvir Stone Shaper. So, the Stone Shaper is again here for beating aggro decks, no surprise, I guess. And because the elemental synergy is so strong, it sort of just makes sense to play it. It can actually be used to beat down people too, because the Divine Shield is quite awkward getting through for a lot of decks. So I feel like it's just a solid minion. But with this minion, I would not be sad to not get the E Elemental trigger, just same to Steam Surger. Sometimes you just have to play the Elementals not getting the triggers, if you need the bodies. Um, even though this, this one's not an Elemental, which is worth noting actually. Yeah, but the card is just again solid, overstated for 
the cost if you manage to put an elemental down the turn before, and you're often going to be able to do that. So, yeah, just in general, a solid card. Then we've got Bonfire Elemental. So, this card is one of the new cards, um, and the reason I like it so much, it's actually, isn't it the only new card? Yeah, I think it's actually the only new card in the set, uh, in, not in the deck list. Um, but I like Bonfire Elementals a lot. So a 5-5 five, five body for 5 is not impressive, right? But it's still pretty decent. And drawing a card is so good on that. I think you compare it to Ancient of Law pre-nerf, um, which was 7 mana, 5-5, five, five, and draw 2 cards, essentially. But this is just, it costs a lot less, right? You don't draw 2 cards, but it just costs 2 mana less. And I feel like drawing a card, that's about 2 mana, right? I think that would cost you 2 mana in most cases. So that means Blaze Call is really, really lovely because he's about that pre nerf Ancient of Law, considering that you played an elemental. And so, all in all, I just feel like it's a super solid mid range minion and he helps you just push that damage in there. He's not very specified, right? So, it's all, against aggro, he's often a little bit slow, but he's not that slow, so he's still okay. Against control, he helps you find your bird spells and he helps you punish their faces, so it's pretty sweet. And against the mid range deck, he's actually pretty much value. Ooh, um, just one card, so that's pretty good. Yeah. Then we've got Aluneth, which is the mage weapon. So, Aluneth is a little bit special in this deck, because in the old secret mage deck, you had to basically play Aluneth as soon as you had it in your hand. This deck is a little bit different on that front, because you don't play Aluneth as. Um, happily as you do with the old secret mage because this deck has a lot more trouble getting its cards out of its hand so the cards are not as cheap and there's a lot more card draw so that means it's harder to just put all, out all your cards so the reason well the way I like to use Aluneth is that when I'm running out of cards I'm going to play it preferably not before turn 8 or 9 or something and then I'll start drawing cards again so I can start from almost no cards and I will slowly over the next few turns accumulate cards while spending say three cards each turn because you draw three and you draw one from natural draw so you'll get another card every turn or maybe two if you don't manage to play three cards which is actually quite hard to do so yeah but Elneth is just super powerful still because if you're running out of resources against some control deck and you play Elneth you can just suddenly start to draw all your resources and all your burn and that's going to be super hard for a lot of decks to deal with so it's definitely in there however there's a thing where with old, the old secret mate you would mulligan for Elneth you do not do that with this deck you don't want to see Elneth in your opening hand which is quite intuitive actually because it costs six mana so Follow your intuition in that case. Yeah. Then we've got Blaze Callers. So Blaze Callers are essentially Firelands Portal, if any of you know that card. Um, you probably do because it just rotated out with this standard expansion. So Firelands Portal and Blaze Caller does five damage to something for seven mana and summons a big minion. So this is a little bit more consistent, you could say, because you get the six six minion every time, where Firelands Portal had a chance to summon some pretty bad crap, which was one ones or two twos or something and that wasn't very nice but really the damage is what matters the most um, with this one though you always get a good body so that's pretty sweet and again you'll often be able to trigger the elemental synergy without much trouble so it's just a super solid minion and that's why it's in there not much more to say about it you would consider that often the Using the damage to go face or to clear something, that's a little bit hard to s tell, but I think oftentimes you'll go face with it, because you're oftentimes the aggressor, right? So you want to just kill the enemy, but sometimes it makes a lot of sense to, well, hit a minion with it as well, to just gain a favorable board position, if you're playing um, sort of like a tempo deck, more than a face deck. And then we've got Pyroblast as the last card in the deck, so it's just a big finisher, it's there to kill people. That's pretty obvious, and yeah, not much more to say it about it. You can power blast minions at times, but if you do so, if you're forced to do so, you, you should just lose anyways. So it's best to not do it. Um, I think you have to know that there's lethal on board or something if you don't power blast 
to make you power bask a minion. Um, because you basically cannot win if you power blast a minion. Um, that's just a general rule. It doesn't have to be that way, but um, it's quite likely that you will not win if you power blast a minion. So make it hit the face, and that's often going to win you the game. You could say the power loss is essentially just making your opponent play with 20 health instead of 30, because the last 20, 10 health will be eaten up by power blast in the end of the game. Yeah. But I think that was about the deck. Um, so yeah, we'll be getting right into an example game now. Okay, we are back with an example game. Mage going into some matchup. I don't really know if we're going to be hoping for aggro control because I think both are fair enough actually. Um, the deck does play decently against aggro, but it's more comfortable to play against control in my opinion. Versus Madiv. So first. Um, you asked for it. That's pretty good here. I'm going to throw um, an apprentice to try to see if I can find something else as well, because um, I really want a one drop. But this um, turn two or three seems pretty decent as well. The frostbolt's fine. Um, however, with this hand, I'm going to hope for that being aggro mage because it's a pretty slow start we're getting here. I'm gonna go for that apprentice now, um, just to well put something on the board, have something done. However, he is I'll going go to put stone in, in my way. Um, we of course cannot have that, but the question is how we stop. Him. I think. I like this, because we don't only get a present on the board, we also prepare for Steam Surge next turn. And now that he uses coin, he won't be able to put down Dragon's Fury um, before turn 5, which is going to mean we're going to get to hit his face with this one. Um. Out of my so he does put another one of those. I'm a little bit surprised at that, that he doesn't just ping away the apprentice, but I guess it makes decent sense. Um. I would, however, be very tempted to simply just go for um, an aggressive line with Thalos, Firefly, and Frostbolt here. I honestly do think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, because we can just play the Steam Surge for the next turn then. Um, or maybe not even that, because we can just keep stalling out that elemental chain with playing fire el uh, Flame Elementals um, while this board is on. Um, because it's sort of enough pressure to make him have to go for some ball clear, in my opinion. How um, long he still doesn't do that. How long can this go on? So, considering that... I... I'm a little bit in doubt whether I want to go for something more. However, I do think it makes a lot of sense going for the Steam Surge with him. Get that one. And... Clear that board. Get in some damage. Now, we have a pretty big board. He has to clear it, and we've actually drawn enough cards to keep on um, putting things next turn. So putting in an element, a bonfire elemental and a flame elemental will be just fine for pressuring this guy. Um, I'm expecting Dragon's Fury. Um, but there is no Dragon's Fury, so now we're actually in an imminent position because we're going to get so much damage in on this guy. Um, now he does get that ping down, so that's a little bit sad. And I'm wondering if we want to clear this Doomsayer or not. So if we don't, we can get a lot of damage in, but if we do, we can. Um, yeah, there's not terribly much we can do, actually. It's a little bit sad that he put that wax in there. Um, however, he doesn't have any healing apart from Frostlich, Jaina. So I feel like just putting in uh, the damage is actually the right play, right? He's not able to heal before turn 9. So if we get a Fireball or a Blaze Caller before then, uh, we're just going to win. 
I feel like that makes a lot of sense, so we're going to go for that line. We even have some card draw to sort of fish it out for us. Reality. Oh wait, I forgot the artifices. Woven. So he's going to obviously do something about that. Just gaining some health. He's expecting fireball from us, so it makes a lot of sense. Um, I think here we're just going to put the place for put the pressure. Um, we're getting right back into that situation, so that if he doesn't have another artifice, he's actually going to have to... Well, hope that he, I don't have any burn, which I don't, but still. Now, let's, we'll see if he can clear this one. So, this comes down. That's a fair way of defending himself. We'll see if it's enough. Uh, I think we're going to go for this guy. Because it's a little bit more safe. We'll go for the Primordial Glyph, trying to pick out a Burn spell. I'm uh, going to pick up Shifting Scroll there. We could have played this, but I feel like it doesn't really do any difference. Um, but the Shifting Scroll might be lovely here, since um, we could just find a Burn spell. Uh, that ain't no Burn spell. But here comes some pressure. Uh, but he's not able to actually play Frost Lich Chain at this turn because if he does, we can still kill him um, since we have 11 damage combined. And we're still um, trying to draw into our damage. So that's pretty sweet. And as I said, he cannot play it, he will lose every time out of that play. Yeah, he knows. So, there we go. Um, an aggressive game, definitely, but we actually just managed to keep on that pressure and we held it for long enough for him to actually um, finally submerge to it. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope that was interesting and I hope that it showed you guys how the deck plays. And I really hope that you're going to take the deck and try it for yourself because I feel like it's a super exciting deck. Um, potentially even with uh, the ability to contest top tier decks such as I wouldn't say Control Mage is a top tier deck, but it's pretty good though. So yeah, um, I hope you liked it, and I will see you in my next video.